I probably haven't had nearly enough of a theater career to justify making this, but I'm going to college in a month and I'm feeling nostalgic, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Hello! If you're new to my channel, I'm Lauren. I'm a rising musical theater major and massive nerd, and today I basically felt like geeking out about some of my favorite shows I've done. I've wanted to do the roll call challenge ever since Katherine Steele did it a couple of years ago. I started doing theater at the age of 10, and while not having a community theater in my hometown has made opportunities a little slim for me, I've still been fortunate enough to get to do some really awesome shows, and I'm excited to talk about them. So the first question on this list is the role I will never live down. So my first feature role, my first role with any kind of solo was when I was 13 and I played Dragon in Shrek Jr. and I had this huge solo called Forever. And at the very end of the song, I have to slide from an F3 up to an F5. And at the time, I didn't have a super developed head voice and I couldn't really belt past like an E. So that note took me a lot of practice. And eventually I did get it to where it sounded decent. But here's the thing, when I was 13, I hated warming up in front of people. I thought it was the most humiliating thing ever. I'd be in the car with my parents with both of them like three feet away from me. And they'd be like, Lauren, please, for the love of God, you need to warm up before you sing. And I'd be like, mama made me mash my M&Ms. But you know what's more humiliating than warming up in front of your parents? cracking at the end of your massive solo in front of 200 people. So yeah, needless to say, after that happened, I never balked at the idea of warming up in front of people again. Like now I'll literally just walk around the house like, pizza is grand and I know that I can hold it in my hand. Roll I felt sexiest in. Oh, this one is easy. I have never felt hotter in my entire life than when I got to play the queen herself. Morticia Adams. Morticia just perfectly embodies that seductive yet caring feminine confidence that I've always like aspired to but never really felt like I could embody myself. My image has always kind of been that of the like innocent sheltered ray of sunshine kind of person so everyone at my school kind of assumed I'd get Alice. So you freaking bet it was the best feeling Ever to walk on that stage every night all poised and beguiling with my luscious black wig and my perfectly contoured makeup and my dress cut down to Venezuela. Just kidding, it actually wasn't. And prove them all wrong! I loved getting to use the like sultry lower half of my range a lot more and I also got to work so much on my dancing. Secrets and Tango de Amor especially just made me feel like a million bucks. Adams was also my first show getting to have a proper love interest, which was great because like who could ask for a better first on stage romance than Gomez and Morticia. And Gomez was actually played by my ex-boyfriend. It was actually wonderful though. There was no drama. We worked really well together. Everyone said we had great chemistry and I just, I had a blast bringing this iconic beloved relationship to life. So yeah, playing Morticia just made me feel so confident and glamorous and very loved and yes, very sexy. I'm gonna go ahead and lump the next two together, which are role my family loves the most and role that made me feel like a star because the answer to both is Elsa and Frozen. Literally nothing compared to the feeling of getting cast as your favorite Disney princess after a year of six straight ensemble roles. Like, ah! At 15, Elsa was the role I had been waiting my entire career for. She was complex, she had a gorgeous costume, she was right up my alley vocally, and yes, playing her absolutely made me feel like a star. I think the ice dress reveal in Let It Go is still the loudest applause I've ever gotten. Except for opening night of Adam's family when my wig fell off at the end of Tango Day and more, but we don't talk about that. Obviously my parents were over the moon about this show and I had so much extended family come see it that it ended up being the highest grossing musical that theater had ever put on, so you're welcome, I guess. But by far my favorite thing about doing this show and the thing that made me feel the most like a star was the kids. It was really special to me to get to play this character that is such an inspiration to so many little girls and just get it, getting to talk to them after every show and seeing their little faces looking up at me. And they, they, they just, it, it was the sweetest thing, okay? Role I was wrong for. I hate to say it because I had a fantastic time doing this show and I don't necessarily think I was miscast. Cast. But if I had to choose, I would say that 
of my major roles that I've played, Susan in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is probably the one I'm least proud of. I was fresh off of Shrek when I did Narnia. It was my fourth show, it was my first like lead role, and it was my first straight play, so I was very inexperienced. Susan was my favorite Narnia character growing up, but personality-wise we're very different, and I hadn't exactly learned to like dig for the common ground and depth and characters yet, so I think my performance as her came off very stiff in comparison to some of my later ones. I'm not saying it was terrible. Like for a 13 year old, it was probably solid, but I think I definitely could have used a little more coaching. And since it was my first time with a major role, I made lots of rookie mistakes, like looking into the audience too much, which may have hurt my chances at getting roles later on. What role do I want to play again? Oh, I know. A couple of months after I finished Narnia, I got to sing the role of Angelica in a touring Hamilton concert. And by touring, don't get excited. I literally just mean we did it at like four places around Middle Tennessee over a span of like seven months. This was at the height of my and pretty much everyone's Hamilton obsession and I was just thrilled to get to tackle such a mature meaty role with such well-written songs. My mom frequently tells me how shocked she was when I sang Satisfied at my callback and she was like, wow, this 13 year old actually has the capacity to understand and connect to these very adult lyrics. Huh. But I must emphasize that I was very young. I was doing it with mostly a cast of older teens and adults. And with my like increased life experience, I would obviously jump at the opportunity to play Angelica again in a fully staged production. Of course, I'm not exactly sure how likely my chances at getting cast are since I'm only 25% Puerto Rican, but it's fine. The next question is the role that scared me the most, and I don't exactly have a single answer for this one, so I'm gonna do the scariest thing about four separate roles. So in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, there was this ridiculously quick change I had to do between Aslan's resurrection and the final battle. By the time it took me to get backstage, I'd have like one minute to change from my British schoolgirl outfit into my like green battle dress. I was supposed to have this belt and leather boots that went with the dress, but the change had to happen so quick that the belt ended up getting neglected most of the time. There was even one dress rehearsal where I straight up went on stage barefoot, which scared my mom to death because there are lots of stray nails in community theater. For Elsa, the way we did my costume change was that I would wear my ice dress the whole time and my coronation dress was held together by magnets and the stage manager would be standing below my ice staircase and tear the magnet dress off. But the magnets would come apart very easily. I regularly had to have people check my dress backstage and there was at least one early rehearsal where it straight up came apart part during Let It Go. The train of my ice dress was also held up with like clothespins in the back under my coronation dress and sometimes it would like just like trail down during the show. Needless to say, it was an excellent motivator for me to adopt that stiff regal posture one must have to play Elsa. Cause otherwise my freaking clothes would fall off. This past year I got to play juror number eight in 12 Angry Jurors at my high school and holy crap, the amount of lines for this role was so intimidating. Actually, I take that back. It wasn't the amount of lines that was intimidating. It was the fact that so much of them were hulking paragraphs of like, pedantic legal details. His bed was at the window. It's 12 feet from his bed to the bedroom door. The length of the hall is 43 feet, six inches. Look, I had my extremely wordy Shakespeare role memorized in a week. That was nothing compared to 12 Angry Juror. I will take iambic pentameter over evidence descriptions any day of the week. I love doing that show though. And without a doubt, the most intimidating part about playing Morticia was singing and dancing at the same time. Morticia was my first ever lead role that required both singing and dancing. And she's also an alto. And according to my music director, low notes take more air. And it certainly didn't help that I got COVID about a month into the rehearsal process and COVID wrecks your lung capacity. I ended up having to do lots of conditioning to be able to get through my numbers and even then it was literally the week of shows when I was able to sing Secrets without getting serious vocal fry. Role I could do in my sleep. Les Mis is my favorite musical of all time, very original, I know, and I got to be in the ensemble three years ago. I'm right here. I could sing Les Mis back to front in my sleep before I was in it, and I can still do it now. Can't beat singing in the shower. The next question is which role was the most fun, and I could honestly use several of the ones I've talked about already. I could use Adam's Family, I could use Frozen, I could use Les Mis. However, I'm actually going to use one I haven't gotten to talk about in this video yet, which is the aforementioned extremely wordy Shakespeare role, Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet. If we're talking purely in terms of which character I played that I've like 
obsessed over and analyzed the most, Mercutio easily tops them all. Like, I remember reading Romeo and Juliet as a freshman and just having Mercutio brain rot, and I just knew it would be a freaking blast to play a character who was that funny, but also that tortured. Actually getting to do it did not disappoint in the slightest. Mercutio was like the direct opposite experience to playing Elsa, which came directly before. As much as I loved playing Elsa, and I did, like I had to be really controlled and really poised, and everyone sort of had like their own ideas of how I was supposed to play her, so like I didn't really get to have a lot of creative input myself. But with Mercutio, I really got to learn to like let loose and find my own inspiration and just like play. I think what made playing Mercutio so special is that he was the first performance that I can honestly say was like an original Lauren Rogers creation. He was the first character where I felt like I really got to discover who he was to me. And I got to go really in depth on like developing his personality and why he acts the way he does. Not to mention I had a huge character playlist that was like half queen songs. <laughs> In addition to all that, there were like so many bucket list things with Mercutio that were just an absolute joy. He was my first comedic role, he was my first Shakespeare role, he was my first monologue, he was my first dramatic death scene! Not to mention one of my best guy friends at the time played Romeo and getting to develop like chemistry and banter with him was just so much fun. But yes, I had the absolute best time going from playing an emotionally repressed Disney princess to a drunk sword fighting disaster gay. Roll with the best costume. I can honestly say I've loved like the vast majority of the costumes I've gotten to wear, but the number one has to be my dragon costume. I got to wear a red sequin dress and like a sparkly Maleficent headpiece and my mom made this gorgeous cape with like this shiny red scaly fabric and these black and red sequins and just Ah, I loved it. Honorable mention goes to Mercutio. I got to wear this plum purple frock coat during the masquerade scene that just made me feel so dramatic and wild and him. Wait, I still have it! You're as beautiful as the day I lost you. Ah! For personal reasons, I will be keeping this on for the rest of the video. Role that was the least like me. Okay, so our production of Romeo and Juliet was such an insane mess that I ended up having to learn the entire role of Prince Aeschylus in addition to Mercutio a week before opening. And Prince Aeschylus is basically just like Javert but more chill, so yeah, not much relatability there. <laughs> I did have a really fun time playing him though. It was fun to play someone so like commanding and authoritative and I loved getting to say the closing lines for every show. And it was fun to play someone so completely different from Mercutio in the same show, especially since they're canonically cousins. I die in one scene and then I come on in the next scene as my cousin who is angry about me dying. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the role that was most like me. This one is weird because with the majority of the characters I've played, I can honestly say that I can relate to like half of their personality on a spiritual level and the other half isn't like me at all. That's how it is with Elsa, that's how it is with Mercutio, that's how it is with Morticia, that's how it is with Juror 8. Side note, I just realized that three of my four favorite roles have been INFJ, Enneagram, One Wing, Nine. Okay, I played Juror 8 as an INTJ, but personality database says INFJ, so we'll allow it. But yeah, like I say I don't have a type and then I clearly do. And then you have Mercutio, the ENFP 7 wing 8 who causes problems on purpose. He truly is the chaotic middle child of my resume. So that leaves the best choice for the character who's most like me as Star to be an Annie. NYC just got here this morning. She shows up, spends one minute belting her face off about her big Broadway dreams, and then leaves. What an icon. Role I wish more people saw. Honestly, for this one, I'm gonna have to go with juror number eight. 12 Angry Jurors was my school's first post-COVID show, and our program was still very much in flux due to not one but two changes in teachers. Our program was still gaining back its reputation, we were too busy to get a lot of family members to come see it, and with the legal premise and the small cast and the single set, it's honestly a very difficult show to sell to a high school audience, even most of the people who auditioned for it said it sounded boring at first. But juror number eight is a role I felt extremely privileged to play. I got to make her my own in a similar way that I did to Mercutio, and I developed a really strong connection with her over the course of the show. She definitely required some of the most subtle and least showy acting of my career, which is something I wish more people would have gotten to see. Overall, definitely one of the performances I'm proudest of, and the show itself is still every bit as powerful and relevant as it was 60 years ago. 
And the last question is the role that changed me the most. I honestly don't just have one role that sticks out for this question, but I think I've learned a little something from pretty much all of my roles along the way. Playing Elsa taught me that I could be someone other people looked up to as an inspiration, even if I didn't always believe in myself. Playing Mercutio taught me to take ownership of my characters and give myself the freedom to make mistakes. Juror number eight taught me to channel my frustration into my art, and Morticia taught me to never let anyone else define what I was capable of. As the outsider who often got passed over in favor of the hometown favorites, I made a promise to myself to never phone it in, to never take a single role I got for granted. And that's something I hope I never forget as I move forward to pursue this for a career. I could honestly say paragraphs and paragraphs more about pretty much any of these shows. So if you have like any more questions, anything else you want to know, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And so long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, and goodbye.